So there you are. Finally finished what you've been working on. I mean, you've been working on this now for a long time. Now, it could vary. Maybe it's an hour. Maybe it's a day. Maybe it's a week. Hell, maybe you've been working months and months and months on it. You've got uh, your pictures. They're all aligned just like you want them to be. You've got video clips, and you've edited them and cleaned them up, and you've got them just, just perfectly placed. You've done your audio. You've put it in programs like Audacity or WavePad. You've cleaned it up. You've removed the background noise. You know, it's it's set up beautifully. You got the music, the soundtracks on there. I mean, everything is great. This video kicks ass. You know this video kicks ass. And each and every piece of that video is intricate. It is necessary to have the full impact. As you watch it, you, you see each little bit and each little piece fall into place just perfectly, and you know. You know you've made something good. And you can't wait to upload it. I mean, you're looking forward to uploading this because you know it's going to kick ass. You know you did a good job. So there you are. You've... You've got everything ready. I mean, the video's been compressed. You've converted it to whatever type you want, whether it's DivX or Window Media File. It doesn't matter. And you go to the content site. Maybe it's YouTube or Dailymotion. Again, it doesn't matter. And you upload it. And you're waiting, you're waiting, you're waiting. You're checking constantly. Did it get up there? Is everything okay? Finally, it gets uploaded. And it's processing. And you're like, cool. This is great. This is great. My video's going to be up. And my friends are going to see it. The people who watch my stuff are going to see it. I mean, everything is just fucking perfect. And what happens? An hour later, you turn your computer back on. You come to check. You want to see, oh, man, this is going to be awesome. You know, they've, they've probably seen it by now, and I can't wait to see what the reaction is. Because, I mean, in your heart, you know you did a fucking good job. And you click on the video, and you go there. And what's waiting for you below the video? A giant pink bar with the words, third-party content removed via WMG. Warner Music Group. And for a second, your brain melts. And rage takes over. And you want to hit your computer, but you're like, fuck that. It's just too damn expensive to do. So you hit your dog. And then your parents yell at you. <laughs> I'm just fucking with you. I cannot stand Warner Music Group. Now, I had a video I was going to upload today. And because of their third-party complaint, because of the algorithm or whatever search engine they have that shuffles through this shit when you upload it to YouTube, got taken down. I couldn't even get it up there. Now, they have the audio swap option, but that's a joke. So today, what I'd like to talk about is Warner Music Group and their asinine policy of removing any soundtrack or any music that happens to be theirs. Everybody's had this happen. Now, we may not see it very much because, I, you know, and I'm talking about the we as in the sense of the people who are watching this video right now because I know who you guys are. You know, I look at your pages, so I kind of get a feel for who you are. And the majority of us like anime. The majority of us like video games. And so we may not have this happen a lot, but I can guarantee you who it's happening to in fucking droves. <laughs> AMV makers. All right. AMV makers are getting the hardest hit by this. You know that joke that uh, every AMV on uh, YouTube has Linkin Park in it? I mean, that's, you know, <laughs> like every AMV you go to, it's got Naruto and it's got fucking Linkin Park in it. That's not going to be a joke much longer. I mean, that's going to be fucking factual. Eventually, we're going to reach a point where there is only one or two songs that we can play, where every company out there is removing uh, content, removing videos, muting videos, because it contains a piece of their property. So why is Warner Music Group doing this? I mean, is it having any impact on their business? I mean, from a business standpoint, what's the purpose? Well, let's take a look at Warner Music Group. Let's look at their stock. Now... As you're looking on your screen, you're going to see this is Warner Music Group's stock. It's valued at 480 a share. Do you notice anything interesting? Do you notice how the stock has gone completely into the fucking toilet? Now, some have argued that music groups like Warner are removing content because it's hurting their bottom line. But I'd like to postulate a different answer. I'd like to say that by looking at this, the opposite is true. People have had the Internet for a while in the capacity that they can torrent, they can go to peer-to-peer -peer sites, they can download what they want, they can use real player. Uh, there's a vast majority, there are many, many different means of stealing music if we want to. And this has all been well before 2006. So, 
If stealing music on the internet, if getting music off the internet was hurting uh, WMG's bottom line, we wouldn't see this steady increase up to 2006. Instead, it would be flatlined. It would be flatlined all the way from, I guess, maybe 2001, 2002, where it became really easy just to get music offline or online. I'm sorry. Instead, what we see is when they became difficult about this, when they started playing hardball with people online, their stock went down. Do you know why their stock went down? Because people don't like getting fucked with. Now, they could have done this a hundred different ways. They could have said to anybody who wanted to use their music, here's the deal. We'll put a disclaimer in your video description saying we have uh, no relation with the content that it's used in, and you have to put a link down to a site that sells it for, you know, like the Apple Store or an MP3 site, you know, something like that. So they have the option of buying it. And that would have worked. They would have seen an increase because more people would have watched the videos, they would have heard the songs, they would have wanted to own it. Now, granted, a good majority probably would have just taken it, but they can take it now. Look at this stock. Really, look at the ineptitude of the business management and Warner Music Group. It is clear as day that from 2006 all the way till 2009, they have done nothing but fuck up. And between 2006 and 2009 is when they became aggressive online. Why would you continue a business strategy that obviously is hurting your bottom line? It doesn't make sense. It is against their own interest to fuck with people like this. It obviously is showing no, no profitability. It, it's not increasing their stock in the least. It's hurting their business. Because people recognize that name. They recognize Warner Music Group, and they don't like them. It doesn't need to be, you know, uh, people think that, oh, you can get back at them, you know, we'll do some massive boycott. You know, boycott their products. doesn't even need to do that. We don't even need to do that. People so hate them right now for this kind of behavior that there doesn't need to be organization. People are coming to this conclusion on their own. They are taking away a form of entertainment that people are using in their videos. Now some would say, well, they have a copyright. They have every right to do that. That's true. They do. They have every right to do that. But again, I'd say look at the stock that's sitting right on the page before you. Do you think that their behavior has helped them in any way? I'm looking at it right now and it sure as shit doesn't seem like it to me. Now interestingly enough, you'll see a bit of an upswing at the very end of that, uh, at that bar right right at the very end and you know what that's from they hired somebody else they hired somebody on the 22nd of April that made the stock swing up and they've appointed him to a position called digital initiatives and his name is Ron Wilcox well mister Wilcox I truly hope that in, in your position which I have a feeling has to do with this kind of stuff you take a different approach I really really hope for the future of your company and for the value of your stock and the happiness of your stockholders, that you seriously look at the way that Warner Music Group has handled itself on YouTube and other content sites. We are seeing YouTube set up a situation where nobody will use music. Okay? All we're going to have for our choice of music and our fucking videos are instrumentals or completely indie music. And I'm sorry, you know, some of that stuff might be good, but the majority fucking sucks. We want to use the artist. You know, when people do AMVs, they, they have a song in their head. They have a song in their head, and they bust their ass for it. And when they finally get that thing together, it fucking crushes them when they upload it, and this happens. Because what do they have to do? They have to go back into the editing program. They have to go back into their video. They have to find another song, you know, clean it up again, get everything synced up the way they want it to be, you know, convert it to what they need it to be, compress it, re-upload it, and hope to God that it doesn't happen a second time. Warner Music Group and you know companies that are taking this approach of removing content directly from videos that have just been uploaded are hurting their own bottom line. It is bad business and it pisses me off. And I'm sure it pisses a majority of you off. This shit kills the internet. You know, I talked about egos. This is another part. Companies that don't understand their market. Companies that don't understand their consumer. You cannot alienate your consumer and expect to make a profit. It does not work like that. You may set up yourself uh, a miniature empire on YouTube, but it'll cost you. It'll cost you in consumers going to the store to buy CDs. It will cost you in consumers going to websites to get MP3s. You are making a lot of enemies on, you know, online by fucking with us. I think the way they view this is parasitic. They look at us like parasites. They get no benefit from allowing us to use their music, and that's true. I say instead of taking a hostile stance, they could look at it more like a symbiotic relationship. Release a statement in a video description saying that you are, you know, there's no liability on your end for whatever the content of the video is that happens to have a song of yours in it. And then work out a deal where anybody who uses your music has to put a link at the very bottom right below the video 
to where that song is sold. I guarantee you, you will see an increase in your profits and an increase in your name brand and your stock will go up. But if you continue along the path that you're doing right now, you're going to lose so many customers, it's not going to be funny. You cannot fight the consumer and win. Not in a recession, especially not now. Now people are becoming more money conscious. Now people are becoming less trusting of corporations and more hostile towards them. If you fuck with us, we will fuck with you. And you will be the next group that's sitting before the president asking to get your ass bailed out. So my question to you is this. Another homework assignment, if you will. How many times has this happened to you? How many times have you uploaded a video that you worked hard on, regardless of what it was, and had a third-party copyright claim hit it before you could even get one view on it, before you could even view it yourself in its complete form? What was it? Why was the reason for it? And how did you get around it? Write it in the comments section. I'm interested to hear your replies.